Hey folks, Professor K here. So hopefully you've had an opportunity to watch the Intro to Photoshop video and understand how Photoshop connects to what you already know from Illustrator. If not, now would be a good time to check that out. Today, I want to show you some basic Photoshop tools to really um, build your confidence and get you started with the program, as well as teach you a few good compositional tricks that will help you in your design work. Let's get started. All right. So today we're going to examine composition and the crop tool and how those interrelate. And you might be saying, oh, Professor K, come on, I already know how to crop in Photoshop. But do you? Cropping is actually surprisingly hard to do well. And that's because if you're not cropping with composition in mind, you can come up with either a very boring or flat sort of image. So I'm going to demonstrate the cropping tool as well as a few tools that Photoshop gives you to help you remember different rules of cropping so that you can create an interesting and dynamic composition when you bring your photos in. To do this, what I've done is I have selected a photo over here on Unsplash. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to save this file and download it right over here. And instead of copying and pasting like I did last time, I'm actually just going to drag and drop this onto the Photoshop icon. That will open it up right in Photoshop. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, perfect. It looks like it imported just great. Now, think about some of our past lectures. What do you see here? What are some of the rules of composition that could be in play in making this a really dynamic photo? Can you see any? Let's take a look at our crop tool and see if that will help us identify what's going on here. The crop tool is going to be the fourth, excuse me, one, two, three, four, fifth tool down from the left with these little crop marks. Go ahead and click that. And when you do that, you're going to see these marks all around the edge of the canvas. That's how you know that you're in the crop tool. However, one thing many people don't know about Photoshop is that it has a lot of different guides that will help you with cropping. So I'm going to show you some of those guides so that you can start to see what compositional elements are at work here. Up in your top bar, notice this guide here. Let's click on it and see what's going on here. This is the overlay in the crop tool. By default, it's not going to show it when you first hit the crop tool. But what you can do is you can choose to always show overlay or auto show overlay. And then you'll see there's a number of different overlays that you can use to see what's going on with the composition. Let's try the rule of thirds first, because that's the one with, that we've studied so far. Click rule of thirds. And then when you click on the edge of a photo here, just once, you don't have to drag or anything like that, check out what comes up. It's a grid that shows you right where the composition is happening. Remember that in the rule of thirds, we want the main action to be hitting along these lines of thirds. So here we can see that the most dynamic part of the composition is this woman standing, and she is right hanging out on this one third mark to the right here. Her hands are up in the air. They're kind of breaking up out into space, and then she's divided the composition in half with her leg. So the photographer who cropped this and framed this very specifically had her pose and framed this so that she would land in that rule of thirds. Let's check out a couple of other compositional techniques using the overlay options to see what else this might fit. Here is a simple grid. That wouldn't tell you as much about the composition, but it would tell you if things are aligned at a certain point in the grid. That can be helpful for design too. On the diagonal, this is great for creating really, really like high energy layouts. See how there's energy in here, but not nearly as much energy as these lines have just introduced to the composition? That's because the diagonal lines have the most movement, the most energy to them. So placing the subject along this diagonal, let's even try just tilting her. And you can see that. This is pretty interesting that it's changing it. Let's notice how that changes how this feels. Whoa, it feels like such a different photo. Let's compare those. Command Z to undo, Shift Command Z to redo. Undo, got energy, but somewhat static. Redo, 
she almost feels like she's falling backwards. She's falling over. That's how much cropping can change your composition. And notice how even having more of her fall off the edge of the page contributes to that sense of her falling. All from a simple crop, right? Who knew such a simple tool in Photoshop could be so powerful? Let's hop back over to the crop tool by clicking on it and then clicking back on our um, grid here. We also have triangle. And again, I'll click once just to get this grid to show. This is a really dynamic one too. Lots of great use of line. What else could we have here? The golden ratio. So that would keep most of the focus in here. And then the golden spiral. So this one that is the one that you'll often see in like um, all of those ancient, ancient Renaissance paintings when they're all like, oh, in nature, the golden spiral happens. That's where you start to see this as well. So as you're using the crop tool, don't, don't just crop. Think about, you know, where is the subject landing in this? Let's try playing with the element of cropping to make this a more or less pleasing photo. What is a more or less pleasing photo anyway? We've got composition here. We know that by the rules of composition, this is a pretty pleasing photo because it heeds to the rule of thirds. But what if we just like didn't have this model's head in here? What would happen? How would the photograph feel? Let's try it out. It's really different, right? It really changes the meaning to not have the upper half of the model in here, not have her visible. It's almost more like an object, right? Instead of a person, you're less focused on the face. The entire focus of the photograph changes just by the simple cropping technique. Even though, and let's compare these two, here's the full picture and here's the cropped version. Even though we are still following the rule of thirds, technically. Here, this is largely still heating to that rule of thirds. If you ever want to adjust your crop or undo it, you can drag it back up. However, notice that what's happened is the photo has been permanently cropped. You're not able to access that information anymore. It's because Photoshop has already cropped it out. So if you ever have to go back a couple paces, up until recently in Photoshop, you couldn't go back more than one or two states one or two times in your history. But let's say that you just tried and you went on kind of like a big long spree and you got really far in the design and you were like, I don't like where that went. This is where you'll want to use the history palette. Open up the history palette, drag it open. And now you can see that you've got all of the commands you've just gone through and you can jump back right to the beginning if you want and get right back to where the photo originally started. So this is a really great thing about Photoshop is that you can do tons and tons of stuff and then you can jump right back to a certain point in time. It really increases your workflow. Don't forget the history palette. It's important. So what else could we do to change or make this photo less pleasing? What would happen if we made sure this didn't adhere to the rule of thirds? What if we placed the model squarely in the middle? What happens to the photo then? It becomes very static and almost peaceful. Whenever you place things in the center of the composition, it takes away a lot of the movement and a lot of the energy. It becomes very still. Sometimes that's intentional. That's what you want out of the photo, but sometimes it's not. Whenever you're cropping, always keep these things in mind because that will help you change the meaning of the photo and the meaning ultimately of your design. All of this cropping and all of these uh, compositional techniques are a huge part of communication. You don't need to know a lot about Photoshop to get a huge boost out of just this crop tool if you know the basics of design and composition. So to this photo, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the meaning of it. And I want to really do sig something significantly different. One thing that I really liked about this was the falling feeling. So I'm going to go back to my crop tool and I'm going to click once to see which grid I have on here. And I'm back to the diagonal grid. I'm going to hover over the edge of a corner, wait for this little curved arrow to show up and then click and drag 
to change the meaning of the photo. And in fact, I could go like this. And instead of falling, it would feel like she's like jumping or lunging. And that would be an option too. Now that you know about the crop photo, and now that you know about the crop tool, what I'd like you to do is try changing the meaning of a photo on your own. Pick a photo that you think is doing something interesting, and then see what you can do using composition and cropping only to change the meaning of that photo significantly. See if you can do it two ways. It's going to really be interesting to see what you can identify in a photo, why it works, and then see if you can manipulate that using your new knowledge. I'm looking forward to seeing what you come up with. I'll see you later.